Dear Rabbi Grauer, graduates, parents, grandparents, faculty, teacher staff of B'nai Akiva schools, today marks a huge celebration in your lives, a true accomplishment. As we celebrate your graduation, we are compelled to acknowledge the recent attack on October 7th and the concerning rise of anti-Semitism. Th this attack was a stark reminder of the challenges Am Yisrael and Israel face in defending our people and our right to exist in peace. In response to such adversity, Israel and Am Yisrael demonstrated remarkable resilience, courage, and incredible unity, standing firm against the threats to its security and sovereignty. This resilience is a testament to the strength and unity of Am Yisrael. I also want to remember one of our much beloved teachers, Mrs. Heather Handel, Allah Shalom, who passed away before Shavuos. Her kindness should be emulated by all and may her memory be a blessing. Last week's Parsha, Parshas Naso, discusses the laws of a Nazir. A Nazir has three basic laws. He can't cut his hair, he can't drink wine, and he needs to stay pure and holy. And there are two important lessons to take from the rules of a Nazir. The first is that everything should be done in moderation, allowing one to stay in control of themselves. Secondly, a Nazir is easily identifiable because of his long hair and we too need to ensure, as proud religious Jews, we keep our appropriate clothing, keep us tzitzit, and be proud to identify as religious Jews. There were two Nazirim in the Torah, Shimshon and, and some say Yosef. Both of these Nazirim are, are Jewish heroes. Shimshon protected Kal Yisrael, and Yosef saved the world from famine. They accomplished amazing things by staying in control and remaining focused. As we move forward, let us carry with us the lessons we learned from the Nazir and make an effort to control our base inclinations, staying focused and channeling our actions into making the world a better place for everyone. And like the Nazir, wearing his hair long and making it clear to others who he is, let us too wear our Jewish heritage proudly. Together, as proud Jews, let us strive to create a world where compassion triumphs over hatred, understanding over ignorance, and unity over division. While today this sometimes feels like a very lonely task, we, like Shimshon and Yosef, need to stay focused on doing what is right with confidence. Dear seniors, you may not always realize just how hard our teachers and administration work with commitment and devotion in ensuring that you have an exceptional experience over your four years at B'nai Akiva schools. But on behalf of the entire board of directors, all the lay leaders, and all our supporters, I'd like to thank Rabbi Grauer, the entire faculty, staff, and administration for all of your incredible work during what was a very difficult year. We are also very proud of you, our graduates. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2024. I would now like to call upon Rabbi Grauer to preside over the 50th graduation exercise of Yeshiva Orchaim and the 49th graduation exercise for Opana Orot. Thank you. Good evening and welcome. Our graduation ceremony is supposed to be the highlight, climax, and apex of your high school years. This year, however, amidst our celebrations, and we absolutely will and we must be joyous, we have to recognize that it has been a very hard year for Kal Yisrael. Let me first, as Mr. Ames mentioned, say that we are still very shocked over the loss of our beloved Mrs. Heather Hendel, Zichrona Livracha, 
No words can describe our profound sadness over this unimaginable tragedy. And this on top of October 7th and everything that has transpired since. We lost Avidan Turgaman, David Schwartz, Daniel Perez, and others with close connections within our small Toronto, Mizrahi, Bnei Akiva, Opana, and Orchaim community. And time does not even allow me to speak about the virulent virus of anti-Semitism spreading all over the world. And as such, tonight's address might seem to be a little bit sad and down, but I don't know how to do it any other way and risk being completely tone deaf to what is going on around us. I will therefore do my best to ensure that my message is one of hope and promise for what I believe is an incredibly bright and exciting future ahead. Seniors and everyone else listening, rather than offer my own words, most of what I want to share tonight will come from others whose fortitude, strength, and unwavering bitachon and emunah should be inspiring to us all. Let me start with a brief story. The year is 1875. Amateur archaeologist Marcelino de Satulo began excavating in a cave in Altamira, near the north coast of Spain. One day, after four years, in 1879, he took his nine-year-old daughter Maria with him. And while standing in the cave, she saw something on the roof above. Look, Papa, oxen, she said. They were, in fact, bison. But, me, but Maria had made one of the greatest discoveries of prehistoric art of all time. For four years, Satula had been literally standing under a monumental treasure, but he had missed it for one simple reason. He forgot to look up. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs uses this story to illustrate one of his most common themes, and that is hope. Rabbi Sachs writes, Look down at the difficulties, and you can give way to despair. The only way to sustain energies, individual or collective, is to turn and gaze up far beyond the horizon of hope. He quotes the philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein, who once said that the aim of philosophy was to show the fly the way out of the fly bottle. You see, the fly is trapped in the bottle. It searches for a way out. Repeatedly, it bangs its head against the glass until at last, completely exhausted, it dies. But yet the bottle had been open all the time. The one thing the fly forgot to do was simply to look up. And so, says Rabbi Sachs, sometimes do we. Seniors, step number one, is to rise above these challenges and to look up to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, as well as always stand with your head held high. You must be proud of who you are and of what you have accomplished. Among the most important ways to combat anti-Semitism in particular is to wear your frum kite on your sleeves. As Rabbi Sachs says over and over again, non-Jews respect Jews who respect Judaism and are embarrassed by Jews who are embarrassed by Judaism. But beyond standing tall, we should draw inspiration from the words of those who lost so much. So many of you have heard about the loss of Elisha Lowenstern, Hashem Yikom Damam. But the words and actions of his wife, Hadas, has been truly remarkable. Walking into the funeral for her late husband, and I want to start with this quote, she encountered a crowd crying with their heads down, and she yelled at everyone and implored them, Tarim et Tarosh, raise your heads. There's so much to live for. And days later she said, talking about his death is so insignificant in my eyes because he only died once, but he lived every day. This was Hashem's decision. We can't change it but we will live through the mitzvot, and this is the true victory. The question is not how you die, but how you live in this world. And she continued, when my husband went up to heaven, I know that all the angels stood up and clapped and said, kol ha-kavod, 
Look what you did. This gives me comfort, she said. I have so much to be thankful for. And finally, in a different context, Hadass said that the Lowenstern family will not let Hamas win. Listen, she said, you can't beat the Jewish people. Will you ever learn from Jewish history? You will finish like Paro. The sea will open and you will drown. We will continue to do chesed, sing Shabbat songs, study Torah, Am Yisrael Chai. And of course, our close friend Rav Jerome Perez, where did he find such strength? In a widely published interview, Rav Perez shared, we are a people who have always known how to rise from the ashes. Our strength lies in our unity and our faith in a brighter future. Even in the face of unimaginable loss, we must keep our heads held high and continue to live with purpose and joy. At his hespit for his son, Rav Perez said, we as Jewish people have always been a community of hope and faith. Our history and belief system reinforce the idea that things unfold as per God's will. Even in trying times, we always maintain our hope. And finally, in a video message on Yom HaZikaron, Rav Perez reminded us, there will always be bitterness in life, but that's only part of the story. There's matzah with the maror. Yes, there is indeed so much pain, but never despair. And that is why perhaps arguably the most central Jewish word is tikva, hope. So seniors, we must carry that hope and we must fulfill these dreams. And as you leave these familiar protective and friendly walls, it is crucial that you not lose sight of who you are and what you stand for. You are part of a proud and resilient people, bound together by a shared history, culture, and faith that have sustained us through the darkest of times. It is our Jewish values and our commitment to halacha, Torah, and mitzvot that have guided us through centuries, and we will always rise above. Avarnu et paro na avor gam et zeh. Just as we have overcome all those who have tried, we will, with Hashem's help, overcome the current challenges too. The hostages, of course, must also remain on our minds daily, but we cannot despair. Let's remember that the first hostage in the history of the world that we know of was Lot, the nephew of Avraham. Lot was captured, and Avraham did not give up hope, but Avraham went after him. Avraham waged war against whole kingdoms to free his nephew. And in the case of Lot, the stakes could not have been higher. We just read on Shavuot the story of Rut. Had Lot not been saved, there would have been no Rut, there would have been no David HaMelech, and as such, no Mashiach, Bimheira Biameinu. Avram paved the path for our ultimate redemption, even though at the time he had no idea the sheer magnitude and the impact of the task at hand. I'm not entering into the realm of politics. Chazal teach us, kol matzil nefesh achad mi Yisrael, ki ilu matzil olam male, that anyone who saves a Jewish soul saves a whole world. And this is because we have no idea of the infinite value and impact of each and every single Jew in the world. But in the words of Elisha Maidan, who lost both legs fighting in Aza, Iran and Hezbollah want to divide us, but we on the home front need to overcome and unite because that is the call of the hour, and only through this will we win. We cannot fight amongst ourselves, and we must find a way to build unity within our people. Alicia, the son of Rav Yaakov Meidan, the Rosh Hashiva of Yeshivat Haritzion in the Gush, went on to say that he is alive, and from his perspective, this is a present from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Chevra, who speaks like this? Who has this superhuman strength? And who gave this strength to these individuals? It's incredible, the amount of bitachon and emunah. And I don't know how many of you were listening to the Zoom. I know that all of you were not physically at the Leviah, but many of you were of Mrs. Hendel's father. But her husband, Lorne, said the following. There are many reasons why this happened, of which we have no idea, we cannot see or know. 
But one thing is for sure. This was an absolute test of our bitachon. And I know, knowing clearly how tra tragic and difficult this is for all of us who go through, there's no doubt in my mind, he said, that this too was the hand of Hashem. Hashem has been with us all along. And just know that Hashem tests those he loves. And this has been one heck of a test. Seniors. The answer is that Klal Yisrael has strength that we don't even realize. We are resilient people. I pray that none of us are ever tested in the ways in which some of these individuals have been challenged, but I know that either way, you will persevere. And allow me to close with one final story of hope and promise that I think is incredible to close on. Albert Einstein was once traveling on a train when the conductor was walking down the aisle, he was punching tickets. And when he came to Einstein, Einstein reached in his vest pocket. He couldn't find his ticket. So he reached in his pants pocket. He started looking around. He looked in his briefcase. He looked on the seat. He couldn't find it anywhere. The conductor said, Dr. Einstein, Dr. Einstein, it's OK. I, I know who you are. We all know who you are. I'm sure you bought a ticket. Don't worry about it. Einstein nodded with appreciation. Thank you. The conductor continued down the aisle, punching more tickets. As he got ready to move to the next car, he opened the door. And as he opened the door and started to move to the next car, he glanced back. And he saw the great physicist down on his hands and knees, looking under his seat for the ticket. The conductor rushed back and said, Professor Einstein, don't worry. I, I know who you are. No problem. You don't need a ticket. I'm sure you bought one. Einstein looked at him, and he said, young man, I too know who I am, and I also know that I bought a ticket. The problem is, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Dear students, you know who you are. You know what we stand for, and you know what you stand for. But now you got to make sure that you know where you're going. we got to make sure, and you have to make sure as you leave or Panan or Chaim, that you live lives of purpose and meaning. Set your sights high with big eyes. Look up towards lofty goals and never lose sight of these goals that you hope to accomplish. And then just take it one step at a time. You've had great practice and success with those goals because despite all the challenges this year, you have been phenomenal BAS leaders in all that you've accomplished, and we are so proud. Some highlights include, and I'm limiting only to a few that I think apply to both Olpana and to Orchayim. First, your stellar attendance and leadership at our rallies in Washington, D.C. and Ottawa. The fact that over 90% of your grade are spending the year studying in Israel next year. Your meaningful choice for a yearbook dedication. Just this past week, the visible and impressive widespread learning that took place led by so many of you on Shavuos evening. Your student-led inclusion of captives, knaves in our daily tefillot, all of the Tehillim, the Achenu, the Avinu Malkeinu, all of it. And going all the way back to October 7th, how you came together right away, and you led our school community in tefillot and in bakashot. You organized an entire plane load of duffel bags that you packaged and ultimately was sent to Israel, and countless other special learning programs throughout the year. And I'm just giving you a snapshot of what you accomplished in one year, leaving aside four years that also included COVID. These are examples of leadership that we are all proud of, an exemplary mission-driven year in which you shaped our entire school and community. And remember, as you leave those doors at tonight, the end of tonight's program, you are never alone. You are graduating from what I would argue is the finest yeshiva high school in North America. And we will be there to stand by you and stand with you as much as possible. We are so proud of each and every one of you. Always look up. Always find positivity. Always find the good in everything, the promise. Focus on your bitachon, your emunah, and your strength of character. And keep your eyes on where you're going. And in Mirza Hashem, you will accomplish great things. Mazal tov, and thank you all for listening.
There's a saying that goes like this. If you want to know someone's mind, listen to their words. If you want to know someone's heart, watch their actions. I think that the Jewish equivalent here could easily be the wise words of Shammai in this past week's Pirkei Avot, Perak Aleph Mishnah Tetzayin. Emor me'at v'asehar be'i. Say a little, but do a lot. On these words, the righteous say little and do much, the Gemara and Bava Metzia says, like our father Avraham, who said he would bring the malachim, a morsel of bread, but ended up bringing them bread and cheese and milk and tongue. When I think about this idea of action speaking louder than words, I think about Aviva Isaacovich, or Panada Road valedictorian for the class of 2024. <laughs> Aviva has proven herself to be an exemplary doer during her four years at Olpana. How so, you may ask? Well, in addition to taking an academically rigorous course load every year, Aviva has found time to volunteer weekly with B'nai Akiva, advancing to the Mazkira leadership position this year. She's been an editor with The Bash, our school newspaper. She has represented her peers on SPAC for several years in a row. She has represented our school in the Model UN competition. She's helped run the Chesed Committee this year, and she's been a student ambassador each year at Open House and our model student at the parent panel this year. In fact, at the end of this year's parent panel, a parent came up to me to say that we forgot to ask the most important question. What can parents do to ensure that their daughter turns out like Aviva? Over and above these impressive leadership achievements, Aviva's actions in seemingly small things have shown a lot about her character and her outstanding midot. Just a couple of weeks ago, Aviva and her peers gave sessions of marathon shiurim as part of their final summative tasks in Humash class with Mrs. Lipner. Even though Aviva and her partner presented their 20-minute shiur first at 9.15 in the morning, and even though she had every reason to leave right away so she could pack for the IDP trip that afternoon, Aviva impressively stayed until the very last shiur was presented well after 1 p.m. Why? Because she wanted to give those presenting at the end the courtesy of an audience to hear them present. Trademark Aviva right there. Her teachers have said about Aviva, and I quote, in addition to the kind, polite, respectful, grateful, and all-around lovely girl that I saw daily in my classes, she was, more than any of her classmates, drama-free. She always seemed to be surrounded by admirers as if her steadiness might steady their own uncertainty. On all Shabbatonim, Aviva is always the first one at tefillah, she is such an incredible dugma ishit, a personal example. Aviva was a tremendous asset to the Olpana Chesed Committee. This year's committee focused heavily on Israel post-October 7th, and Aviva's ideas seemed endless. She spearheaded the Mother-Daughter Night Chesed activity, which highlighted her grandmother's tzedakah, Small Wonders. Devoted, warm, and eager, it was a pleasure working with Aviva. Aviva is wholeheartedly dedicated to learning and growing as a person. She is not afraid to explore new academic challenges and push herself to greater intellectual heights. She's incredibly bright, quick to grasp complex ideas, yet humble about her academic successes. It is heartwarming as a teacher to hear such positive feedback on such a constant basis about how fascinating the learning is for her. Many times, immediately after finishing an oral exam, she shared how much she found the material so exciting to explore. She truly is a role model for the Opana community. As Mazkira of B'nai Kiva of Toronto this year, Aviva went above and beyond in creating programming, meeting with other student leaders, and helping the shlichot out with anything and everything B'nai Akiva related. 
Like Avram Avinu, when Aviva saw the need for leadership based on the complexity of this year, she responded simply with Hineni, I am here. Beloved by her teachers, administrators, and peers, it is clear to see why Aviva is this year's Olpanada Road valedictorian. It is my pleasure and honor to present the Nachman Sokol Valedictorian Award for Olpanada Road to Aviva Isaacovich. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mrs. Fixler. What an exciting night. Look at everyone all dressed up, all of us in our fancy outfits, and so many waiters. Or is that the Orkheim graduating class? It all feels so special. But I want you to imagine what it would be like if we had this ceremony again tomorrow night. And then the next night, and then the night after that. It would very quickly go from a once in a lifetime feeling to boring and routine. This is what happened to the Jewish people in this week's Parsha. They were sustained by the man, which the Midrash tells us could taste like anything they wanted it to. Bagels, Rosh Chodesh donuts, Slurpees, and yet, they got bored with it and complained to Moshe Rabbeinu. Vayavchu gam b'nei Yisrael vayamru mi yachilenu basar. They cried out and said, who will give us meat? Hashem makes thousands of quails fall from the sky. The people gorge themselves and Hashem brings a plague to teach them a lesson. This is a fact of human nature. No matter how special something is, we habituate to it and slowly stop appreciating it until we forget it's even there. We've all heard the famous saying in Pirkei Avo, which drives home this message. Ezehu ashir hasameach bechalko. Who is rich, one who rejoices in their lot. Or, as it's translated as in the new parents edition of Pirkei Avo, you get what you get and you don't get upset. <laughs> Meaning, it's important not to get used to the blessings in our lives, but rather to appreciate them as if they were new. It is fitting that this teaching comes to us from the famous Tana known as Ben Zoma. The reason that he's known as Ben Zoma and not as Rav or Rabbi is because he passed away at a young age. He never had the chance to become accustomed to the gifts in his life and is sharing this wisdom with us across the ages. Never get used to what you have and take it for granted. Opana, class of 2024. I am here to remind you that we have so much to be grateful for. Whether it's the positive role models in our lives, diverse academic and extracurricular opportunities, or relationships with each other, we have been blessed in so many different ways and so many different flavors. The fact that we may have gotten used to this and stopped thinking about it is only more evidence of just what a blessing it is. On behalf of our class, I would like to thank Rabbi Grauer and the entire administration. Mr. Rapp, Mrs. Fixler, Mrs. Lipner, Mrs. Weinberg, Prof, Mrs. Taylor, and Rabbi Kurtz. Thank you for making Opana a place we looked forward to coming to every day. Thank you to our teachers and shlichim who went beyond the call of duty to ensure that we never stop learning both in and out of the classroom. Thank you for teaching us how to think critically, grow spiritually, and most importantly, better understand ourselves and the world around us. Thank you for inviting us into your homes and for replying to our emails at all hours of the night. You truly care, and it shows. In particular, thank you to Maura Esther Shore for your constant guidance and support. <laughs> in helping Avi, Noam, and me lead B'nai Akiva during this difficult year. 
You are a true Dugmai sheet, and your love for Am Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael, and Torah Yisrael shines through in everything you do. Thank you to our parents for sending us to an institution that makes us feel so valued. As you occasionally mention, it ain't cheap. And we thank you. <laughs> And we thank you for giving up sports cars, jewelry, and everything else that you could have bought instead of a semester of tuition. We hope that it has been a good investment. <laughs> to my parents, mom, don't cry it. <laughs> Mommy and daddy, thank you for being living examples of who I wish to become. Thank you for teaching me the value of hard work, generosity, and a good name. Thank you to my siblings, Noam, Ronnie, and Solly. And to my grandparents, Baba, Zeta, Bubby, and Zadie, for being such supportive pillars in my life and for making me feel so special. I would not be the person I am today without all of you. And last, but certainly not least, I would like to thank the class of 2024 for making the last four years at Olpana so memorable and meaningful. <laughs> From Color Wars, to Minioi, to Rabani, to Mrs. Weinberg's Cottage, to New York City. Our grad trip a few weeks ago reminded me of how lucky I am to have been a class with you all. From the thrilling boat ride to the hotel lobby, and my favorite part, the New York City subway. Everything we did, we did with a smile and a positive attitude. Each of you has had an impact on my life, and I wouldn't trade any of you for some random desert meat from the sky. Thank you for being the best friends I could ever ask for. I'm already counting down the days until our 10-year reunion. Sunday, June 18th, 2034. Mark your calendars. We are moving into uncharted territory. New schools, new cities, new friends. But one thing will never change. We have spent four of the most important years of our lives with each other and faced so many challenges together. A global pandemic, the mysterious disappearance of the locker room, and daily class schedules with no discernible pattern. We have shared each other's joys and setbacks, and we have done it without the drama that teenage girls seem to be known for for some reason. My bracha to all of us is that we never get used to the blessings in our lives and never forget these four great years together. You are my role models. You are my friends. You are my man. Thank you. In this week's Parsha, we read about a set of silver trumpets that were used to muster B'nai Israel in times of danger and times of war. We learn that Uvnei Aaron HaKohanim Yitgu Bachatzot Vayulachem Lechukat Olam Ladorotechem, that it was the Kohanim, the sons of Aharon, who blew the trumpets. But this idea of involving the Kohanim in warfare seems at odds with our very first Kohen, Aaron, who was known to be Ohev Shalom, Rodev Shalom. How do we square this juxtaposition? We all know that this year, more than any other, there is no contradiction between those two roles. One can love peace, but also respond to war when enemies attack. There are few students, in my experience, who represent this duality of national pride and national mission, as well as good midot, as Noam Isaacovich. Noam, as his name suggests, is one of the most gentle and pleasant people I've ever met. More than once, I have bumped into him in the grocery store, shopping not for himself or for his family, but for Shlichim, for the school and for Bnei Akiva. My youngest son, also named Noam, refused to go to youth groups in our shul until other Noam took them over and made them great. In his award-winning entry to this year's public speaking contest, Noam delivered a funny explanation of the lessons he learned from a car accident over winter break. 
But what struck me the most about the speech was not the comedy, but the overwhelming attention he paid to the emotions of his parents. The list goes on and on, but what's abundantly clear is that Noam has a deep sense of duty and care and goes about making the lives of others better and easier with a smile on his face, without ever being asked. Noam's non-academic CV is beyond reproach. Four years of Model UN, including a win in grade nine, grade representative in grade nine, sukkah building leadership this year, and being our own B'nai Akiva Shaliach. In the words of Noam's teachers, he is professional, polite, mature, hardworking, focused, and kind. He is always with a smile and a twinkle in his eye. He is always willing to help out with anything that is needed, and he does it in a way that makes you feel good about him helping you. But it is this last comment from a teacher that I think sums up the nature of Noam more than anything that I could write myself. Over the years, I have had many students who are bright, many who are kind, many who are mature, well-adjusted, confident, and many who are deep and thoughtful. Noam stands out as a young person who possesses all those characteristics woven together in a manner I can only describe as wisdom. He takes his learning very seriously and his responsibilities even more. But in addition to his sterling amidot, Noam has had an outstanding academic record, earning 90s throughout high school, including a demanding grade 12 year with multiple maths and science, honors English, and honors philosophy. Noam is a person who puts himself in a place to be challenged and grow and always rises to the challenge. He is an outstanding example of the best traits of everyone in his grade and therefore represents them perfectly. B'nai Akiva School's four-part mission includes growing intellectually, socially, emotionally, and religiously, self-reliance in classical Jewish text and grounding in classic world disciplines, the centrality of Eretz Yisrael and Medina Yisrael and the importance of Lush and HaKodesh, and continuing Judaic studies at Yeshivot in Eretz Yisrael. There is no part of Yeshivat Or Chaim's mission of which Noam is not the living exemplar. And this was recognized by his teachers and peers in their overwhelming support for him as this year's Nachman Sokol valedictorian. It is my pleasure and distinct honor to call Noam to the stage. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Every spring, not long after the Leafs have been eliminated in the first round, high schoolers around the world graduate and gather for graduation ceremonies. Perhaps it is no coincidence that as we take our first steps into the real world, the weekly partio trace our ancestors' first encounter with Eretz Yisrael. We all know the story. The Jews appoint 12 spies who come back with a frightening report, and the people are disheartened. The Maraglim exclaim, Vanehi be'nenu kachagavim, and they felt like insects. In today's world, we only need to look at our phones. We are, we are bombarded with warnings and promises about the world around us. It's tempting to outsource our taste to so-called influencers and to accept the version of the world that social media algorithms generate for us. But all too often, this leaves us feeling discouraged and small. Put yourself in the shoes of the Jewish people who had endured slavery, witnessed the miraculous exodus from Egypt, and survived the journey through the desert. But instead of drawing strength from their own experiences and having confidence in Hashem's promise, they fell victim to the temptation to rely on the opinions of others or influencers. Boys, we too have been through a lot. Perhaps not 400 years of oppression, but four years without hoodies has to count for something. Not to mention sukkah building, COVID, getting splashed by water guns, not sleeping over at school, and those mosquitoes on grad trip. Let me take you back to our grade nine orientation. We barely knew each other. Netivoters and Eitz Chaimers gravitated to opposite ends, leaving the Ora Emmet and Hamilton kids stranded in no man's land. <laughs> but by the end, we were speaking and engaging with each other as we do now, as Or Chaimers. Our past does not define who we are, because now we are brothers. When someone was sick or in the hospital, we made sure they had perfect study notes. When the Hamilton crew needed somewhere to stay in the city, our homes were open to them. 
In one case, I don't think they ever left. <laughs> we don't need anyone to tell us what we are able or unable to achieve. We know what we are capable of when we work together and put our minds to something. Just after October 7th, our class was at the forefront of organizing a gathering for the community. We spent hours in shipping facilities sending aid to Israel. This is a testament to the character of our class, and I have no doubt that each and every one of us is going to make an impact on the world around us. But we didn't get here alone. Over the past four years, we have been blessed with a faculty who have been committed to our success and who have worked tirelessly both in and out of school. Rabbi Grauer, thank you for ensuring that we have acquired the skills needed to continue as strong and faithful of Dei Hashem. Mr. Rapp. <laughs> Mr. Rapp. Traditional high school relationships between administration and students are sometimes formal and distant, but you are anything but traditional. You lead a faculty of approachable and dedicated educators who help us learn in a healthy and productive environment. <laughs> Mr. Parker, from morning attendance to Caesar and the unique and lively hallway person you are, your deep commitment and care for each student is truly remarkable. <laughs> Mr. Lazar, professional, friendly, a confidant, and a leader. Someone who wants to see us make good decisions and succeed. Your coordination of school-wide Shabbatons, guidance through university applications, and checking in on us are all testaments to going beyond the call of duty. Rabbi Shostak, through the Judaic studies you oversee, you have developed within us a stronger sense of Zionism and a deeper connection to Hashem. <laughs> Mrs. Klein, the academic, social, and emotional support you provide is world class. You are at the heart of this school, from big initiatives to small pieces of gum. To the teachers and faculty, thank you for encouraging us and pushing us to reach our fullest potentials to become the best versions of ourselves, teaching us how to think, apply ourselves, and solve problems. And yes, that includes word problems. In the few 52-minute classes we spent together weekly, we learned and gained tremendously. Parents of graduates, you too are graduating tonight. You're moving on to a new chapter. No more making our lunches, asking us when school finishes, and reading those BAS manuscripts, I mean, I mean, newsletters in your inbox. You are the reason why we have our gowns on and diplomas in hand. You support us, sacrifice for us, and give it your all for us. Without you, we would certainly not be where we are today, and so we, the class of 2024 are eternally grateful. <laughs> On a personal note, oh no, mom's crying. On a personal note, I would like to thank my mom and dad for being the best role models I could ever wish for. Among all you have taught me, a few things stand out. How to treat people, how to stay calm, the value of hard work, and the importance of integrity. To my Baba and Zeta Levin, and Bubby and Zadie Isaacovich, thank you for all your love and support, and I feel so fortunate to have grown up with you, with all of you so close by. <laughs> Aviva, thank you for being my study partner, my co here, and my best friend. You put the day one in day one. And I guess there's a reason why they call me Aviva's twin brother. <laughs> to my brothers, Ronnie and Solly, thank you for our driveway basketball games and for being loud enough outside my room to make me study instead of trying to fall asleep. You're welcome for the hand-me-downs. <laughs> and finally, to my other brothers, 
the Orchaim Class of 2024. Thank you for the mosh pits, Richmond's runs, grad trip, and four unforgettable years. I'm proud and lucky to be graduating alongside you, and I know we will always be family. So, put down your phones. Look around you. All of the ingredients for success are right here in this room. The education that we have received, the friends and mentors we have gained, and the truths we have learned about ourselves. Congratulations, and I'm Yisrael Chai. As is our practice, the graduating classes of Yeshivat or Chaim and Upanad Oro took it upon themselves to complete learning, the learning of the entire Tanakh. They will share their siyum as their lasting gift to the BAS community. This year, the class of 2024 is dedicating the learning to the memory of the Kadoshim in Eretz Yisrael who have made the ultimate sacrifice since October 7th. We honor the IDF soldiers who have fallen in battle the Israeli police officers and first responders killed in action, and honor the memory of the civilian casualties. We are also dedicating this year's siyum to Mrs. Heather Hendel, Alea HaShalom, our beloved English teacher who tragically passed away in recent days. May the merit of our learning serve to help elevate their neshamot. We would now like to invite Michal Bin, who will be completing Tanakh, and Avi Marcus will be reading the Hadran, followed by the Siyum recited, the Kaddish recited by Rabbi Kurtz. Uvishnat acha lechoresh melch paras, lichlot zabar Hashem, bethir miyahu. Heir Hashem, esroch koresh melch paras, vayaber kol, bechol machuto, vegambe michtav lemor. And in the first year of Koresh, king of Persia, at the completion of the word of Hashem by the mouth of Yirmiyahu, Hashem aroused the spirit of Koresh, the king of Persia, and he issued a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Ko amar Koresh melech paras, ko mamlachot ha'aret, natan li Hashem elokei ha'shamayim, v'hufa karalai, livnot lo vayi b'yirshalayim, asher b'yehuda, mi v'chem mikol amo Hashem elokav imo v'ya'al. So said Korash, the king of Persia, Hashem, the God of the heavens, has delivered to me all the kingdoms of the world, and he commanded me to build him a house in Yerushalayim, which is in Yehuda. Who among you is of all his people? May Hashem, his God, be with him, and he may ascend. Hajan Alach, a swim by Arbas, the Fratanach, Datanach, the Dathalan, a swim by Arbas, the Fratanach. Lonina Seminach, the Lomina Seminon, Loba Almadan, the Loba Almadati. Vira San Milfanacha, Adonai Lohenu, Elohevatinu, Asher Bahar ben Vim Tavim, Vira Sabdi Rehem, Hanemarim Bermet, Shibishut si Fratanach, Mimi Cray, Kodesh, Vishut Psukehem, Vitvotehem, Vatiotehem, Unukudotehem, Vetamehem, Ushimot Kadoshim, Hayotim Mehem, Uvishut Nevi'e Hamet, Shafte Israel, Vetzidike Hadorot, Hamuz Karim, Pesifera Tanach, Nizke Liot, Noam Adonai Elohenu, Alenu Umase Adenu Kanana Alenu, Umase Adenu Kanehu, Liot Zochim Hayom, Bayom Hatunatenu, Uviom Simchat Libenu, Leorer Em Habanim Semecha, Uliahed Sod Torah, Shibirtav, im sod Torah Shabape, Bihuda Shelyam, Baava Vahava Vereut. Hael Haneman, Behod Varav, Yam Shich Alinu, Shefa or Hachaim, Lanefesh, Ruach, Nushama, Vahari Hamenu, Betov, Virat Adonai, Kohayamim, Vaharevna Adonai Luhinu, at Divretor Techa, Befinu, Vifi Amcha Bet Israel, Vinia Anachnu, Vitzainu, Vitzainu, Vitzayam Chabi Israel, Kulani Ode Shemacha, Vilamde Tartecha Lishma, Vinismach Vinalos, Bedivere Talmud Tartecha, Vimitsotecha, Vichukotecha, Lolam Vaed, Kihem Chayenu, Vore Chamenu, Vahem Nege Yamam Vilela, Yehi Adonai Elohinu Imanu, Kasher Haya Imavatenu, 
Al yaz venu, v'al yitzhenu, l'hetiv l'vavenu ilav. Valechet bechod rachav, v'lishmor mitzvotav, v'chukotav, v'mishvatav, asher tziva et avotenu. V'hira tzan milfanecha, Adonai Eloheinu, v'elohei avotenu. Shekashem shezratenu l'sayem asirim v'arba sifrei atanach, mimikrei koyesh, ken tazrenu l'hamshich l'umad sfarim mitra, shivichtav, umitra shiba'ape, v'lesaymam, Lilmad ulamed, lishmor la sat ulakayem, et kodi ve talmud tara tacha baava. Venizke, venichia, venira, venirash tova uvracha, lechaye haolam haba. Uvishut hatara haktosha, shivichtav, ushibape, hoshienu adonai elohenu, vekabsenu min hagayim. Umloch al kol haolam, kula bichodecha. Vina se al kol haaret, bikarecha. Vishba alenu, or yeshua, verachamim. Mimaine Haishua. Amen, Ken Hiratsan. The Hiratsan Imre Fivi Yon Libila Fanaha, Adonai Tsuri Vigali. Please rise. Iskadav, Iskadash, Meraba. Be Amadu Asili Shadatola, Hiame Sayola, Sakola Hayal, Malivne Karta Dushlem, Usha, Hel Hechlebegava, Ume Karpokanan of Hamerala, Sava, Pokanadish Mailas, Revi, Amli Husha, Brikumakuse Vikare, Viatmach, Purkane, Vikare, Mishihe, Behai Hon Vemakon of Hai, the Hobes Israel, Bagala, Uvisman, Karivi, Ruamain. Yeheshime Rabba Mivarach, Lialam Lome, Omaya, Yisbrach, Vishbrach, 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 Yehei Shalom Rabbi Min Shemayim V'chaim Tov Yimelein Avakol Yisrael V'imru Amein Oseh Shalom Biramav Huyaseh Shalom Aleinu V'alkol Yisrael V'imru Amein